before I get onto the show, I wanted to ask you just as kind of as, as a kid or when your first kind of entry into comic books were and what the comic books were, comic books that kind of got you into them. I mean, the, the comic books were, it was, it was very strange. A year ago, I was in a weird place where I was writing um, a movie and the TV show based on comics that were in my backpack when I was a chubby fifth grader. Um, so I was I was I was lucky enough to write the script for Akira, and I was and I was working on Daredevil, and I realized I was oh my god, this is exactly what I was reading. And then if I had to add one third one in there, it would have been The Punisher. Uh, was another one I was reading at the time as a kid. So it was very weird uh, to kind of be working on Daredevil season two at the time and be like I'm living I, I'm living that that kid's dream, which was great. Was that always the ones that was Marvel were always the kind of lure for you? Or was it kind of both? Because I was always. I didn't really distinguish between DC and Marvel. Yeah, it was just whoever. I think when I, I, mean, I started reading when I was really young, and I think uh, early on I didn't discriminate. And uh, I even before I understood they were two, there were, there were many different brands of or many different worlds. I remember thinking like, why doesn't Wolverine show up in a Batman comic ever? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. What, 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 these guys should fight. Um, until I later realized, oh, they're all very different worlds. I mean, by later I mean at the age of ten. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I kind of read a lot. I read I read a lot, and I read a lot of everything when I was a kid. I did not. So how did the how did Daredevil first come? Because obviously I know you worked on Orange is New Black mm -hmm. and, and Sons of Anarchy. How did Daredevil come up? As a I was I just finished my first season on Orange is a New Black, and uh, I had a great time working with them and working with Netflix. But then I read this article about this guy Drew Goddard who was working on uh, Daredevil with Netflix and Marvel, and uh, I loved his work so much, and I really just wanted to work with him. I loved Cloverfield, and I really just couldn't wait to get in a room with him. Uh, I was very lucky, and uh, I got the job, and, and I, I really like lobbied for it. I really pushed for it. I was like, no, 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 this is important to me. This is going to be great. This is somebody who I want to work with and learn from. Uh, so yeah, so I, I really went after it, and I was really lucky to get the job on the first season, and then I st stuck around and did the second season, and uh, now Defenders. How exciting was it to, to work on something like Daredevil as a, as a TV show? Because you obviously in films you get two hours to, mm -hmm. to kind of explore a character and then there'll be sequels and everything else. Whereas this you get 10 episodes, 12 mm -hmm. episodes, and then a second season. I remember it was one of the very early, like the earliest conversations we had in the writer's room with the writers who were there was, we're not doing the costume until episode 13. Like we just we just knew it. And I mean, I, I have to give all the credit to, to Marvel and Netflix for being okay with that because that's a that was a big risk. And even, even several months in, we were like, I can't believe we're getting away with this and I really hope the audience likes this. Um, but we just knew it was the right thing to do story-wise. It also felt like because it was the first uh, Marvel Netflix show, kind of we wanted to ease into the water of comic book world stuff. Um, and at the time, Netflix had already done House of Cards, had already done Orange is the New Black. And so we kind of wanted to you know, say, we're, we're making a prestige cable show here. Yes, they are also superheroes, <laughs> but, uh, but f first and foremost, it's about characters and they're about people before they're even about superpowers. So uh, it, was, it, was an inter it was interesting at the beginning because we all just knew like, oh, we want to do the Frank Miller. We want, we want to do the sweatpants. We just, that's, that's what we want. Um, but weirdly, it also kind of dovetailed into this idea that we were not doing your typical comic book show uh, or comic book property. Even, even in, a, in a comic book movie, you tend to get you know, the, the origin story and the costume is out of the way in the first 40 minutes. And then you're, you're off to the races. But to think that somebody was okay with us doing 12 hours of programming <laughs> before we got Charlie in that red suit uh, was kind of wonderful. How early into the process of Daredevil did they talk about Defenders? Was it always something they wanted to do? Or was it kind of a gradual thing? As it was, it was, it was always something about? that was part of the plan. I know that I think when, when Marvel and Netflix first signed the deal, it was for each one of each of these four shows. And then ultimately this Super Bowl, as they would talk about it, was, was the Defenders. Um, so it was always there. It was always kind of like, it's Christmas, it'll come. It's, or it's vacation, it's coming. It's, it's later, <laughs> though. It's not now. Um, so we all knew it was coming. We all knew it was happening. I imagine every one of those rooms at some point, Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist, everyone knew, oh, the Defenders will be coming later, but they just wanted to tell the stories they were telling at the time. But it was very much, I mean, often we'd, we'd find ourselves pitching an idea or coming up with some stuff, and Jeff Loeb, the head of Marvel TV, would often say, like, that's for the Defenders. Like, we're, that's, that's for later. And uh, we were all very measured. We're like, okay, we'll do it later, which is kind of great. What was the biggest challenge with this? Because I can imagine, obviously, you've got these four shows that loads of people love, and people love them sometimes more than the other, and whatever else. Because you get the four characters, and you have to want to give them equal screen time and mm -hmm. have compelling stories. Was that the biggest challenge going into this? That was a big challenge. Another big challenge, I think maybe the biggest, or one of the biggest, was uh, the idea of combining these four different worlds in one world. And these four, I mean, even just, uh, even though JJ and Luke had been in, the, in their own, sh in, in the shows together, uh, even just just combining these characters tonally felt like it was going to be a challenge, and so for for a while I remember in the writers' room, I really I really uh, struggled with kind of how to how to wrap my head around the fact that Jessica Jones and Danny Rand were going to be in the same room, until it just felt like instead of the, the, the correct thing was to, instead of kind of shying away from it or being scared of it, just lean into it, just lean into the fact that like yeah that's 
it's really it's really hard for Jessica to wrap her head around whatever the hell Danny has going on. <laughs> so uh, that felt once once leaning into the problem be, uh, kind of became the solution. It all it all kind of got a lot easier for everyone. There's some great talent in these shows, and obviously they've built up their relationships. Charlie Cox and Kristen Ray and everybody else. Whose idea was Sigourney Weaver? Because that was that's quite a coup. <laughs> uh, I'm still not committed. Like I'm still just like no, that didn't happen. She's that's fine. When we release it, like no, uh, yeah, no. It was we started building a character as a Sigourney Weaver type. And we thought, it'll be somebody like a Sigourney Weaver. And it's just really powerful, really strong uh, woman. And she's really, and she's really physically interesting. And she's really, she's really intellectually interesting. You know, like a Sigourney Weaver. Not that we'll ever get her, but it'll be, it'll be somebody like that. And weirdly enough, it, it happened. And we got Ripley. And uh, she's wonderful. And she's wonderful on the show. And she was wonderful to work with. And everyone, like, every one of the defenders kind of all, I, I remember all of them feeling at one point or another, like, Sigourney Weaver's on set with us. Like, this is happening now. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was great. In terms of um, Marvel, I mean, how much? I know obviously Kevin Feige is busy with other stuff, but does he does he have any say in the TV show? Is he kind of involved in it, or does he kind of let you? I answered the Jeff Loeb. I answered the Jeff Loeb. So he's he's the boss. He was at, <laughs> at, at the TV. Yeah, and he's the head of TV there. Uh, they spoke about obviously a lot of fans will uh, are dreaming of seeing Daredevil and all these guys kind of joining the MCU, and obviously the MCU is at a point now where some of the older players might be starting to to bow out and bring those guys in. Have they, have they spoke about that? I mean, you probably can't say That's anything, way above my finger. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't, yeah. Because it's something fans really would like to see. I mean, even sure. Daredevil, people would love to see, I guess, a, a movie version of the Charlie Cox R-rated comic Yeah, book. yeah. I mean, I, but to that answer, I'd be like, there's 26 hours of it, you know? And, and, uh, and yeah, so I, I, yeah, that's above my pay grade. It's kind, of, it's kind of nice though, isn't it, to have, I think as a fan myself, to have the TV stuff separate to the MCU, in a sense, there's so much going on in the MCU right now to have this and have this as a more grounded and kind of more adult quote unquote version is, is kind of cool. Yeah, and it's been it's been fun as a fan to watch, even the ones I wasn't involved in, right? It was it was really fun to watch Jessica Jones and watch Luke Cage and feel like these are all, they're, they're simmering, they're slow, they're slow burns, they're taking their time, we're living in this world, we're not worrying too much about looking up at the superheroes that are crashing down into this world, we're really just in Harlem for 13 hours. Um, yeah, those that, that, that's been fun for me. Also, not just as a fan of comic books, but also as a fan of TV. It's been fun to think of these shows as existing alongside, you know, the, I don't know, the great TVs, the, the great TV shows that, that we get to watch also. Is there a plan to, to kind of bring these guys back together again? Because obviously I guess they'll go back off into their separate worlds for a little while first. Yeah, I don't, I have, I don't know what the next, I don't know what the plan is. I honestly don't. Uh, I, I kind of, I kind of, <laughs> yeah, I answer, I answer to Marvel uh, in, in that, in that uh, regard. But uh, as of right now, this was really, this was kind of big and fun and crazy. Uh, and at the beginning, we were like, we have no idea how this could ever work. And then at the end, of it, we we're like, oh yeah, no, we, we this was cool. Um, so I'm sure, you know, if, if, I, I could say right now, like I have no idea how it could ever work again. But then of course, two months into a writer's room, you're like, oh yeah, no, that's that makes some sense. It's kind of part of the job of being a TV writer yeah. and being a TV producer is kind of figuring out impossible problems. Uh, it's your, the, at the end of an episode, it's your job. I remember we did this with Daredevil every time, season one and season two. It's like, get him into an impossible to escape situation to the point where he's on his knees and there's a cop with a gun to the back of his head and he's caught and that's it, it's over, the show is over. <laughs> and then having to come in the next day and be like, okay, how do we, how do we undo that problem? So I'm sure, yeah, who knows, everything is possible. Uh, just finally, you alluded there to Akira. Uh, but you got the screenplay for. Do you know if that's? Still I have no idea about it. Yeah, no, I shouldn't have even brought it up. I shouldn't have even brought it up. Honestly, I'll yeah. keep quiet about that. That's yeah. a little, little exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey.